I was I was uh, working with someone this week uh, who um, uh, we, we've had an interesting dialogue, and so I asked it, um, him a question, and I'll I'll tell you you'll get what the question was in a minute. But so his response, which I thought was really honest and um, honest, and I I, I admired him for his honesty so so he said well he said I th I think I am what I have so so we were talking about so in other words if you don't have very much then you aren't very much if you have a lot if you are um, have you know a husband, a wife, children, two cars, a nice house, a good job. Maybe you, maybe that. I mean, and and as he, as he was speaking, I think he was kind of sort of like working through that and saying, well, maybe that doesn't work because then I said, you know, I, I know a lot of people who have a great deal of money and they're very unhappy, and so he said, yes. So so. His answer was in response to a statement that I made, and so I, I, I suggested to him there are two extraordinarily powerful um, ideas that can change your life, and they can change your life. And 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 why it, it fascinates me because. Um, it's a kind of a meditation and psych psychology or psychotherapy can they somewhat come together in these two thoughts, these two ideas. It's very Buddhist, but um, so I suggested to him. I said, you know, um, they they used to say I think it was. Adele Davis St. John, was that her name? I can't remember her name, but the famous nutritionist who said that you are what you eat. Do you all remember that? You are what you eat, so if you're a vegetarian. You know, I, I have a statement that says that you could be a vegetarian and still have porkish speech. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was one of the smartest things I ever said. You could be a vegetarian and still have porkish speech. So, uh, so, but she said, you know, that uh, you are what you eat. And so, so I suggested to this guy that you are what you think. And I think that's an extraordinarily powerful statement. And it's, and I also think it's somewhat, um, well, it's difficult. It's kind of difficult because, um, I mean, he struggled with it, and as we talked about it, he sort of like moved in the direction. So uh, you think that um, you think that your prospects for life are not very good. You think that things aren't working out well for you, or things are working out well for you. Um, but the the thoughts that that are sort of like a um, a web in our mind, they hold us within that reality, that context, don't they? So, um, but j before I go on with that, I just, I just want to ask you. I mean, do you, do you think that you are what you think? Do you think that you're something other than what you think? <laughs> you could say something if you wanted to. <laughs> you don't have to. But I mean, it's really, it's like, it's no, it's kind of pointless for me to sit here and say that, right? If, if, I mean, I, I mean, if you're, you know, I really hope that you, you look at it. Um, you could, you could wake up and, and have a, um, well, I'll give you an example. I, this is just kind of like, this is totally, um, just happened about two hours ago. I called someone on the phone <clears throat> uh, who's coming to the benefit. 
And, and I, so I was calling to see what time their plane arrives. And so the, the, the person said, oh, he said, I was crying a little bit. I'm sitting on my front porch crying. Well, you know, I'm hard of hearing, so I thought he said I'm sitting on my porch smiling. I did. I said, well, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's very sad. And so, you know, and he was nice about it. I mean, he didn't, he just sort of, he waited for a second. He said, I don't think you heard what I said, did you? <laughs> I said, maybe not. So I said, what did you say? And he said, I'm sitting on the porch crying. And so I said, oh. So I, was, so I said, so why are you crying? And so he said, someone uh, that, that he, uh, he said, sort of like a hero. He said, she's a hero to me. He said, just died that morning, just this morning. She passed away. And so, uh, and he said, he said, she's been, he said, really? I said, was it unexpected? And he said, really? He said, she's been dying for two years. Uh, and it was a kind of a, he said, he said, a kind of crazy cancer. Anyway, he said, he had never, in two years, he's known her in two years, and he said, I've never known a day they both live in the little tiny town. He said, she's, I've never known her not to smile. He said, I have never, ever known her not to smile. And he said, through the whole damn thing that she's gone through, he said, she's always been able to smile. Now, what does that tell you about what she thinks? Doesn't it tell you something about what she thinks? I mean, there's something in her head, isn't there? that causes her to smile and causes her to think. And at the same place, I mean, you can just imagine, I can, a lot of people in the same circumstance, right? Who could have the thoughts, oh, this is terrible. My life is terrible. I'm not going to live. I mean, you know, whatever you want to make, whatever the words are. So, um, the Buddha in, in my office, uh, the, my form, the office that I used to have, I had this uh, poster. I've told you, it's it's from the Lankavatara Sutra. It's a wonderful. That's a wonderful sutra, and um, and he says it every up, every way but down or up. I mean, he says it every way, including down and up. Uh, essentially, he says you create. It is your mind that creates the world. Right? Some of you have seen that sign, uh, that poster. It is your mind that creates the world. And then, so like, it's funny if you read that sutra, it's like you just go down like a paragraph and he says, for instance, you understand, don't you, that it is your mind that creates the world? <laughs> or then he'll say, because the world is the way you create. I mean, he says it in a million different ways, over and over and over. And I, I read that and I think, I guess he kind of thinks it's maybe it's hard for us to get that concept down because he certainly keeps repeating it. So this is the same as saying, you are what you think. Now you could, you could go to a, a, a place of saying that, um, what are you beyond thought? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's something else entirely. Because uh, Buddhism would, would say that you uh, uh, are something beyond thought. But as long as you are um, living and, and believing your thoughts, you are what you think. So that would be maybe the next way to say it, right? As long as you believe what you think, you are what you think. So do you believe what you think? Sometimes, yes, sometimes not. <coughs> sometimes you don't? Yeah. That's very good. What would make what would make you, um, what would create the possibility of not believing what you think? You got the, oh! <laughs> uh, I guess if you see the thoughts for what they are. And what are they? <laughs> Just thoughts. Sometimes that works. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes that works to help 
So, uh, for those of you who are hard of hearing, <laughs> <laughs> so he said, if you see the thoughts for what they are, right? And, um, and then the answer would be, you see them as just thoughts. Uh, that's pretty amazing. So, uh, just to go on with that, so what is it, what would it be, what is it that sees a thought as a thought? Well, no, you know the answer to that, actually, Eric. I mean, it's awareness or mindfulness, or, I mean, we could call it mindfulness. So, um, would that, would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, this person that we were talking about I, I had said to me, um, my life is a mess. And, and so when, when he said that, you know, I thought, it is because he believes it is. I mean, it cannot not be a mess, right? Wouldn't matter if he had, you know, a billion dollars or whatever, right? But I mean, if you, if you, if you uh, are walking, you wake up and, and you say, my life is a mess, it's a mess. It has to be. It cannot not be. I mean, even if everybody in the world does, disagrees with you, it doesn't matter. It, it is because you believe that it is. So you could wake up in the morning and say, my life is wonderful and be dying of cancer. Yeah? Isn't that possible? Isn't that possible? I mean, is that like just, you know, I mean, to, in a sense, it's radical to even think that, isn't it, right? I mean, that you could, you could look in the mirror and say, oh my God, you know? I'm wonderful, and I have cancer, or whatever. So, um, there's a great Zen teacher um, from China, one of his famous sayings was, every day is a good day. <laughs> every day is a good day. A you disagree very, with him? A very stupid question. Um, what if one is uh, suffering with Alzheimer's? Or Wait just a minute. I have to turn my hearing aid on. <laughs> Wait, it's beeping right this minute now. What if one's what if what if one has Alzheimer's or is going into uh, a state of uh, lacking the word? Uh, well, no, that's per but Alzheimer's delusion. Sorry, delusion. Uh, yeah, um, or just going slowly going crazy for whatever reason, diabetes, whatever physiochemical process is going on, and you're struggling to to deal with this. What then? Well. Um, it's sort of like, mm, I don't quite know, um, I mean, I guess that goes back to, first of all, the first thing that I said about that, that we're all ultimately something beyond our thoughts, we're, we're ultimately, we're something other than what we think. So, um, you know, there's a story about, um, it might be Achan Cha, I believe it was, but <clears throat> one of the famous, one of the great teachers uh, in, in Thailand who had a series of strokes until finally he was absolutely just, you know, every, he just had people taking care of him constantly. And I don't think he really could seem to recognize anything, and, and maybe, he, I don't know that he had Alzheimer's, uh, but, but people said that there was a presence to him even though he was beyond right communication and he could not. I mean, there still was something, some essence of, uh, of uh, quiet or, or, or silence. So, so um, I think that you're, the, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to say, uh, answer this in a polite sort of way. <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, meaning that, that it's sort of like, it's almost like, it's like, well, what if, uh, what is it, what, what if there's, the moon is made of blue cheese? Meaning that, it doesn't really, I mean, we're, we are basically talking about, right, that you are what you think, 
I mean, in other words, we're assuming that we're talking about having the capacity to, to, to process reality, right? So, I mean, it, it's a whole different ballgame if you're talking about someone who's lost that ability to really be processing uh, what, what we consider reality. And, and really, um, the, you know, the, I mean, the, the, uh, the deterioration of the brain, right, it certainly is going to totally wipe out your uh, ability to think clearly or think at all. But it certainly is, doesn't mean, well, let me just ask you, so what do, what do you think that means? Because, I mean, I don't really know if I have an answer to anyway, but. I, I don't think any, I, I haven't. But you are asking a question. Yes. I mean, that, that I, mean I, don't really, I don't really think that the question you're asking is in, is in the words. Just one minute. I'm sorry, you don't believe? No, I mean, the question is, I mean, it's quite obvious, right, that if someone has lost the capacity to think clearly, they can't think clearly, right? But then, so then you, it's almost like, so what? What does that mean? That's what I'm trying to process. What, what does it mean? But it means, um, exactly, it doesn't mean anything. It just means, I mean, what if, what if, what's going to happen to someone who has cancer and is going to die? The answer is, they have cancer and they're going to die. So, there's... I guess I was trying, or am trying, to see or grasp, like everybody else is trying to grasp. Right. So my thought went that right. way, and it's trying to grab onto something. Of course, I mean, we're, we're warned about clinging, grasping, and looking for gain. Right. Uh, but of course, you know, you're thinking you have all this this progress right. through meditation, right. this calm, blah, blah, blah. Right. All of a sudden, you're flinging feces against the right. wall. Right. Ew. That, so, that yeah. kind of goes against 20 years of refinement, uh, polishing, or whatever process you think you're engaged in. Right. So I think that as you talk about it, you, it, it becomes more clear really what you're asking. And Right, I mean... It, it is kind of like, okay, a retarded answer, it is what it is. You just, you deal in the moment. That it is, is what it is. And also, it is true that, you know, that uh, the... I mean, if, if you were, this is really just uh, sort of off the, uh, I mean, I don't even know um, what I think. Uh, I'm just sort of blabbing, but if you, if, if uh, I mentioned Ah Chan Cha, so if you were, uh, many people would say that he was an enlightened being. If you were an enlightened being, number one, does that mean that you could not get Alzheimer's? No, it just doesn't. Because you could certainly, you can get, you know, I mean, I mean the Buddhism, Teaches that uh, karma, you know, there, there's a there's a, a wonderful expression that if a karma is uh, an arrow. If you shoot an arrow, it's going to hit the target. You could shoot an arrow and say, "Oh, I changed my mind," <laughs> right? It won't stop the arrow. The arrow is going to go and hit a target. You could uh, shoot the arrow and fall over dead. But the arrow still will go will fly and hit the target. So in that so in that way, you, Buddhism and, and Eastern teaching would be that um, that things that happen to the body, and Alzheimer's is essentially something that happens to the body. It's a it's a, it's the deterioration of the brain, as you know, and uh, that Buddhism would see that's karma, right? I mean that's the karma from you know the, from from whatever. But I mean the body has to uh, experience whatever it has to experience. So uh, it could, in theory, it could happen to an enlightened being, right? They still could have a body that's going to be deteriorating, and in that in that fashion, um, I would say that they have completed and finished what they're supposed to do on this earth, and that the body has to live out its thing. Uh, anyway, that. Um, Many people, there's a great te Ramakrishna, <clears throat> who's one of my favorite teachers in India, and he, uh, when he, he had throat cancer, and he, he had it pretty excruciating, and he had his disciples would sit with him, and, and they would say, Master, why are you putting yourself, because they thought he was magic, you know, and they, they would say, why are you putting yourself through this? Why are you, why are you putting yourself through this intense cancer? This was about 1870. And he said, he said, I'm not putting myself through anything. He said, the body, he said, this is the karma of this body that he, he said it has to play out as it will. So that's to me the only way you can look at Alzheimer's is that it is, it is playing out 
what it has to play out. And that being that, that, that was in the body, if it has achieved enlightenment, it's not in the body anyway anymore. And it's okay. Leslie, you wanted to. I, I had read in a magazine, um, Blanche Hartman from you know, the San Francisco Zen Center, um, said she, um, she answered a question from someone I'd written that she had visited, she was, had gone to, to give, to, um, to pay respect to a visiting monk who was, um, no, the word was that, 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 that he had, you know, was losing mental capacity, uh -huh. I don't know what, for what reason. And she said when, when she bowed to him, she could see that he had the, the, and I don't remember the word exactly, but it was like the capacity for warmth, the kindness, uh -huh. that, you know, that, that was an, a you know, was high still there. That, 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 that was in, you know, that, you know, and, yes. you know, and she, and she was sort of just delighted, you yeah. know, that, that he would be, he was just, yeah. yeah. And I so love I just that. thought I'd share that. Yeah, and that yeah, I mean that's a that's a that's a lovely uh, a way to, to look at it. I've heard uh, other stories like that, not the same one, but that that people, I mean, uh, meditation teachers have who've been well. Here's a good example: but meditation <laughs> teachers who are losing it, and they still maintain, as you say, some something uh, kind or warm or present. Mm -hmm. you, I, in my personal experience, because my my mother went through Alzheimer's, and I would visit her where she was staying, and you know, and and so I had a lot, you know, I saw a lot of the people, you know, and, and, and it's not all the time, because sometimes they're lost in a bad me memory, because, but, but a lot of time, they're really in the present, uh -huh. you know? Right, right, they, right, I'm sure. Sort of, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure, I mean, I can tell that there's more than one person in this room who's had some experience. Well, yeah. you're, you're, there are many nods going on in different, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I was going and sitting with, with my mother in a <coughs> um, assisted living, and there were, most of her friends were having you know, some levels of early Alzheimer's or later. But it is they were very much in the in the present, sort of like childlike. And uh, so um, I said to this this guy that we were, when we were having our conversation, I, I, it was it was kind of I was sort of like was just. Uh, ideas were kind of popping in my head. And so I asked him if he'd ever had a lucid dream, dream or a dream. <laughs> Have you ever had a lucid dream? <laughs> I did one. It wasn't fun. A lucid dream. So I said, have you ever had a, I, see, I won't let that go. Like, what is that? What is that? What is that? Lucid dream. And so um, he said, um, that he did, he, I don't think he, I can't remember, I think he said he had not. But I always think those things are fascinating, right? So what's a lucid dream? Some of you have had lucid dreams in here. and um, But a lucid dream is where you're asleep at night and dreaming, and suddenly you know you're dreaming. Right? And you're still dreaming. And you know that you're dreaming. And so the, like the Tibetans really think that's, uh, really teach that that's an extremely powerful uh, um, moment because you can actually enter the dream, right? I mean, with some awareness and maybe kind of change what you would be, uh, maybe the outcome. So, um, and I think not just Tibetans, I mean, there are a number of people who, who teach that, I suppose. But as I was talking to him, it occurred to me that, um, back to what Eric said, the truth is if you have the ability to enter your think, thinking or your thoughts when you're awake, that's like entering a waking dream, really. It's the same thing, I think. It's just that you're awake rather than asleep. Because to change a thought means that you have to really, I mean, it's, if you just picture it, it's kind of a, an amazing sort of thing. It's like you enter your own mind. Now, that's that's an amazing concept in a way. But but it really, but if you think about it, how the hell is it you would be? What is it that would be changing your thought? I mean, and and we're not just talking about like I think I'm going to drive to town. We're talking about some real powerful mind state, right? That you're in, 
Oh my God, I've got to go over there and teach Long Beach meditation today. I don't have a Dahmer talk and to hell with them. I don't want, but okay, so, okay, so what do you do? How do you, so, you know, I mean, that's, that's just reality, right? I mean, it's just, it's, that's, it's, it's, uh, there's, how do you enter that? So, uh, how does one enter a lucid dream at night? Uh, I, mean, I don't have an answer for that. So uh, I, I came up with this concept many, many years ago, as you all know, and you've heard me talk about it. But, but I really do believe that there's, that we have this extraordinary capacity to create a wedge. It's what I call a wedge. There's, we have this ability to create a wedge where we're not just our thought, right? You're not just what you're thinking. The wedge is there's something between the thought and the observer. And, uh, I mean, the observer is not the, the uh, thought. The famous uh, William James said this, and uh, maybe he's one of the first people, but he said this, right, the, 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 the passing thought is itself the thinker, right? That's William James. That's wonderful. I mean, he said that in 1890, and he's American, for God's sakes. <laughs> The passing thought is itself the thinker. See, that's so powerful. Do you get how powerful that is? I mean, I think, oh no, I'm not the thinker, I'm the observer, which is just totally wrong. The, the thinker and the thought are the same thing, unless there's the wedge. Do you understand? I mean, if there's no, if there's no, and or that would be mindful. Something that's sep that is separate that's watching. Some, some extraordinary capacity of the mind to look at itself, which as far as we know, the, the humans are the only thing that's ever, that have ever pulled that one off. So, uh, I, you're, you know, oh my God, what am I going to do? I've got to go do a Dharma talk and I don't want to because I don't have one. I think I'll just stay home. But if there is a, if there is a, a, a capacity for there to be um, this silent observer that's just watching that. You know, then it, it, and it doesn't change it. It's not like the silent, because it doesn't, as I've said, it doesn't have a dog in the hunt. But if there is this awareness, all of a sudden, oops, you see it, and then, as you said, you see that it's a thought. Something that is not a thought sees that it's a thought. Something other than thought sees thought. Then it, it, it can change. So I was carrying a bucket of the most black, dirty water I have ever seen, you've ever seen in your life. I mean, this was t last week. My sink stopped up, and I, I was using my plunger. <laughs> I kept plunging, and it wouldn't um, stop. It was a terrible, terrible moment in my life. <laughs> and so, um, and it stank. It smelled bad. So I was thinking, you know, so I thought, well, I, and it wouldn't unplug, I couldn't unplug, and I, I couldn't get a plumber right then, so I thought, well, I've got a, I had this little red plastic bucket, a paint, but ace, ace bucket, and so I said, I'll just carry that dirty water and at least empty the sink and pour it down the bathtub, which I thought was a clever idea, so I did that. And right in the middle of the living room, the bucket broke. <laughs> now, I have a Persian rug that's pretty damned expensive. <laughs> and so, I mean, it broke. It hit my foot. I mean, it smashed. Sm now, how many people have ever had a plastic bucket break? I actually had someone explain the physics to me this week, and I said, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> So it broke, and and so here, I mean, it was like, it's a, it was unbelievable. It was the, maybe the worst moment of my life. <laughs> it wasn't. But, it, but as it smashed to the floor, and so here goes this dirty water towards my Persian rug, there was this thought, um, <coughs> how stupid, how stupid, Stupid. And uh, I tell you, I, I swear to you, ten years ago, I would have that would have been the thought, right? That would have been the thought. I mean, that would have been it. How stupid! I mean, then there would have been yes. And you might as well, right? 
commit suicide or whatever. You don't des you deserve this. <clears throat> so so there was the thought, how stupid. And then uh, immediately uh, there was a, a wedge. There was something that just looked at that and saw that was just a thought. It was just ridiculous, right? So then came the next thought. There was no way you could have really figured this out. This was like this is was. There's no way that you could have. It, who in the who in the name of, of uh, you know uh, who who would ever the name of Ned? Who would think that a plastic bucket would break? So I mean, it was, but it's like I did not allow myself to, to be unkind at all. And um, that it's only because something intervened. I mean, it's like something entered the the waking dream, right? Something saw that it was just on the way. I was on the way to having like some really bad cycle of thoughts. That was, they would have, you know, I mean, it was a mess. It took well, it took at least an hour to clean up. So, but I've thought about that oh, many, many times. I've over and over. And I thought, oh my God! I mean, how in the world is it that, that um, I do not tolerate unkindness in my mind towards myself? I mean, I will not tolerate it. Because it's just clear that it's self-flagellation. It's just clear. It's clear. And it's also clear that you can only do that if you are, if you have some sort of level of, of uh, <clears throat> awareness where you, when, right, when that, that unconscious shadow, whatever you want to call it, when that thing r rises up, you either embrace it or you, uh, you, you, you enter the mind. You enter, you know, enter the dream, just like a lucid dream. So that's the second thought that I suggested to him. You remember that I told you it was, there's two incredibly powerful thoughts that I think can change your life. I really do. I really do. You are what you think. And if you resist that and insist that there's got to be some other answer other than I am, well, I think, you know, I, you, first of all, I mean, as I said, if you are beyond thought, that's different. Then you're you're home free, but if but if you are in this the little um, middle world of the middle, uh, earth, uh, if you are in what is called conventional reality, where we are thinking all the time, then to acknowledge that our thoughts are powerful and what we then and we are what we think, I think is the first step towards something really incredible happening to you, and the second thing that has to follow that is it's kind of clear what I've said you have to then say I have the power to change what I think right I have been given I have just by definition just by what I am I have the ability to change my thought which is what I did when I dropped the <coughs> damn bucket and the other thing is you know, it's, and we can go far beyond uh, my uh, dropping a bucket of dirty water. Um, the Buddha said, he said it more than once. He said, I think what I want to think. And what I don't want to think, I do not think. It's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, you have like this something coming up, or like this self you know, some, some self-judgment, this judgment, you can feel it coming. You can feel it coming, you know. And so then you, you see it coming and then you just enter the mind. No, no, no. No self-judgment allowed in this territory. Right? So, I am what I think, I can change what I think, are enormously powerful concept that each of you I, I would tell you it's like it, it's it can change you and and the, the, you know back to the meditation thing as I said Buddhism and psych psychotherapy the the honing the skill of watching your thought is what we're doing 
It's basically what we're doing. And uh, it's so easy. I, I, I would say that everybody in here confuses that but me. No, I'm just kidding. I would say that we all confuse that because we think that we're supposed to be what? What, what are we supposed to be doing when we say feeling bliss, feeling calm, feeling, you know, seeing the, see the light. There is a good one. I'm going to see, I saw the light. Uh, meditate, what is it? Meditation is about seeing the mind. Meditation is about seeing the thoughts, seeing them, learning to watch them, to witness them. Not, not to control it, but to watch it and not to get lost in it. And as you do that, and, and the more you do it, the more you really develop uh, an extraordinary capacity to then start changing it. That's all I have to say. I'm finished.